How strong is 3D printed carbon fiber? Is it actually stronger than regular 3D printed parts? In this video, we'll find out if carbon fiber parts are stronger or not and why. There are many different ways you could test how strong a material actually is. In this video, we're going to be testing the bending strength of carbon fiber. The sample I'm using is a simple beam. It has two notches on the bottom to help it stay on the stand, and one larger notch on top so we could have a controlled failure. Here's the first test I conducted with the carbon fiber beam. It was able to hold about 20 kilograms before snapping. So we will be testing this a couple more times and we'll be comparing it to the normal 3D printer filament. But first, this may seem random, but I promise you it all ties together in the end. Now what's similar about these two materials? Or what's different? Is there anything different? This is my wife's rubber band for her hair. You can see it's uh, very stretchy. And I have this piece of glass. The similarities between these two materials may surprise you. But I'll get to that after we finish testing the carbon fiber and regular 3D printed parts. Here's the second test with another 3D printed carbon fiber beam. This time, I let the 3D printed part cool down to room temperature after taking it off the 3D printer bed. You'll see a big difference between how this part fails compared to the first one, even though they're identical. The only difference is the temperature of the material. Okay, and here is the third and final test for the 3D printed carbon fiber piece. It was able to handle about 24 kilograms before catastrophically exploding. Now let's test the most commonly used material in 3D printing, PLA, or polylactic acid. Now despite the fact that my stand kind of broke a little bit, this material actually never failed. And this is because PLA is extremely ductile. Basically, it's the opposite of brittle. It doesn't snap. It's actually amazing how many times I could bend it before the material starts tearing. So which material is actually stronger? This depends on what type of strength we're actually talking about. In engineering, there are two different types of strengths. There's the ultimate strength of a material, and there's also the yield strength. I'll show you what these mean. Here's the regular 3D printed part again. You can see, when I apply force to the center of the beam, the beam flexes or displaces a little bit. So here's a graph that is very common in engineering. It may look complicated and it may look really confusing, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible for you. If we apply a lot of force, the part moves quite a lot. If we only apply a little force, the part only moves a small amount. But what's with the weird part of the graph up here? Why is it such a different shape? Basically, you get to a point where it doesn't matter how much force you're applying, the part's just gonna keep moving or bending. We're basically applying the same amount of force, but the amount that the part moves or bends keeps increasing. So which material is actually stronger? 
You can see here how the carbon fiber part actually snapped and didn't really bend during failure. This is compared to the normal 3D printed part, which I actually haven't gotten to break yet. And here are the final results. The black line represents the carbon fiber filament and the white line represents the regular PLA filament material. It may still look a little confusing to you, but all you have to know is the taller the line on the graph, the stronger the material is. The wider it is, the more ductile or more bendable the material is. So in this test, we actually found that the carbon fiber filament is actually stronger than the regular 3D printer filament. And what about the rubber band and the glass that I showed earlier? Well, it turns out that both of these materials are actually elastic, and glass is actually perfectly elastic. All elastic means is that when you bend a material, it snaps back into its original position. So glass is really brittle, but it's actually elastic because when I bend it, you can see here I'm barely bending it, but it moves back to its original position. This is what the graph for glass would look like. You can see that once you reach a certain amount of force, the part just breaks and it doesn't bend at all. The graph for the rubber band would look like this. For a small amount of force, the object is able to stretch or move a lot, but it's always able to snap back into its position. And that's the definition of an elastic material. So when you're designing something or building something or when an engineer or if you're an engineer designs something, you have to think about how you want your part to fail. Do you want it to snap and be very brittle but strong? Or do you want it to be flexible so that way when it fails, it doesn't fail catastrophically? So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot about different material properties and how engineers analyze the properties of different materials. Thanks for watching and happy printing.